pain is it's like a hell of a drug. So it's, I mean, it's more addictive than cocaine because like you have niggas who are in the trap. It's like when they knowing they in the spotlight, when they get the fancy cars and the jewelry, they know they putting heat on themselves. But it's all about being like it's like you are a superstar now. So right. it's like. Some niggas just can't live without their feelings. So. Right, and, and you're right. You know, it, it is a hell of a drug. You know, Pac had a song called What Would You Do For Fame? And, uh, you know, if you just listen to the words, you know, people are willing to do almost anything for the fame. And we got countless numbers of people that we can look at from AR Arab to Casanova to Taxstone um, to BMF um, to YFN, YSL. Um, we have enough examples to where we can ask ourselves, like, is this what we is this what we want to do? You're not gonna be no different than any other of these artists and people that's getting locked up. So what makes you think if they couldn't beat the system, that you're gonna beat the system? You know what I mean? So if nothing else, I hope that the young youth uh kind of learn from what these other guys, the mistakes they made, and kind of change the narrative. You know what I mean? You know, because at the end of the day, you know, entertainment is supposed to be just that, entertain. You know what I mean? It wasn't supposed to be real life. Yeah, and I, I know I seen BMF. They thought of clever ways to hide their money, but I remember I seen something about how when they was buying Lambos and stuff, maybe like a lawyer or the, like the person at the dealership will put the car in their name. Right. And they still will drive the car, but it's like as soon as you get in the car, the heat is still going to come on you no matter well, who well, you yeah. that's, that's facts. You so, know what I mean? I mean, you're right. So, and, and when you think about it, you know, when you see people in those type of vehicles, police are always going to stereotype you. You know, they mad. They don't have that type of money to be riding around in those type of cars. So, you know, it makes them probably more prone to want to pull you over or, you know, they go back in their little uh, chat rooms with the police and be like, look at these guys. Look at these guys. So, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, we always try to stay below the radar. You know what I mean? I think that's the safest place to do is to stay below the radar. Once you on the radar, <coughs> you can't take yourself off the radar. Yeah, you basically have to go to another country. You know what I mean? Yeah. For real. Yeah. And I mean, even if you lay low, you know, it's only a matter of time. Because one thing about, about the feds and about the criminal justice system, they'll wait for you. They ain't got nothing but time and space. You know what I mean? So that was kind of disheartening to see uh, another RICO case. Uh, hit home back in the city of Atlanta. I think they lay off, lay off sometimes. I remember Cameron said, I forgot, I can't remember. He said a famous singer called him to his house when he was performing somewhere, and he basically he knew the police department. He said basically he um they know what you're doing. You need to chill out. Right. And Cameron was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he was like, that what made him start selling drugs or whatever. See, I'm not going to admit to nothing. But I'm going to take heed yeah. to what you're saying. Because contrary to what people may think, there is a hip-hop police. 